the commodity now is is attention. This is really where true marketing comes in, in, in my opinion, right? You have to be able to position yourself in a marketplace or at least pique someone's interest and curiosity enough to be able to to get them off of you know Facebook or off mm -hmm. of YouTube and bring them into your world and then hold that attention. And I think that's really where, you know, tr like real marketers separate themselves because anybody can set up a Facebook ad. Anybody can buy click funnels. Boom, 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 boom. What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. Wiki. Welcome back to the new and improved Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. We are new and improved. We are new and improved. We'll talk about that at the end oh. of the episode. I feel so fresh and clean, clean. Yeah, yeah. Squeaky clean. But yes, wait till the end of the episode. I mean, listen to the episode. Yeah. But we have some added bonus material for you there. Yes. Yeah, uh, we're going to start tacking some stuff off in the end. Uh, so make sure you hang around to the end um, after the interview with Sam because there's some more Woo! good stuff there. Uh, but today, I already said it. We're talking to Sam Bell of sambellmarketing.com and PPC Boutique. He is an ads and webinar ninja. Ooh. Like this episode, he broke down uh the basically like steps to make a webinar that is going to perform for you and then to top that off he broke down the facebook ad strategy that this really blew us away was mm -hmm. when we started getting into facebook stuff how he's using facebook ads to load up these webinars and convert people mm. it's a pretty cohesive process of here's how you run facebook ads into a webinar and make lots and lots of money there he he did not hold back yeah and, and when i say that i really mean it on all all fronts especially the ads like literally you can if you have never run facebook ads and you haven't like you've been confused or whatever like just listen to this get the notes definitely get the because notes because they will be written out for you sue will make sure it's it's amazing get the notes they're free just two weeks from this thing going live go to hustle and flow com slash comp but those notes i mean like you will you will be able to set up a killer campaign running into whatever it doesn't need to be you know webinars but yeah. it's amazing sam's just amazing so sam bell marketing.com is sam's uh thing um sponsor hrefs as always not as always but <laughs> really for the end of the year our favorite sponsor uh, they are our favorite uh hey one of, one of two of our favorite favorites. sponsors yeah. <laughs> we're gonna get ourselves in trouble yeah but um if you haven't used hrefs we talked a lot about it um it's you know it doesn't tie in with facebook ads necessarily but google side of stuff it mm -hmm. does but um, I would urge you to go check out Ahrefs. So it's a h r e f s dot com. There is a free trial. It's seven dollars for seven days, but they actually have a ton of training that's totally free yeah. publicly, like video training. There's like courses and stuff. And so if you're feeling like eh, I don't really know about this SEO stuff or whatever this uh, this Ahrefs stuff and try, just go check out some tutorials and they'll give you ideas on how oh, to implement yeah. it. The Ahrefs blog and the Ahrefs YouTube channel are insane. Like they're. they're they're, they're two pieces of con uh, two sites where I'm going through their content constantly. I, mm -hmm. I subscribe to their YouTube channel. I subscribe to their blog and like they just put out amazing content. Um, again, they've got a $7, seven day trial over a H R E F S dot com. All right. All right. Let's do this. Let's go talk to Sam Bell. All right. We're rolling. Sam, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. Awesome, dude. Yeah. Now we're, uh, it's been a, what, a few years we were talking about like last time we saw each other we we're hanging out your mastermind you and joe lavery san diego mm -hmm. during tnc and that's a good one dude you had a, yeah, you had a killer yeah, group. That, was, that was that was actually uh yeah that was probably one of the one of the uh more fun uh traffic and conversion summits and uh and then uh going uh, we were talking about the party the <laughs> prohibition party that my, my man damien put on yeah uh, so yeah man definitely good times and a lot of great information too Oh yeah. I mean Fernando Cruz was there from from Agora and like oh dude he was there's a whole insane bunch of people. with the types of stuff he was talking about. I mean everybody there was <laughs> Taylor Welch, I believe, is there and we're chatting with him later today. Yeah, Chris now, there. Yeah, yeah, Chris. Partner, Actually, I don't Chris. think Taylor was there. I think his partner Chris was there. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> but we Full were talking circle. to Taylor later today. <laughs> there you go. Well yeah, Sam. I mean, we're um so you do a whole bunch of stuff in the webinar. I know ad space, you know, Facebook ads and just uh all that stuff and and we're kinda telling you, I guess just a little like the curtain open and the curtain a little bit to everybody listening we're like yeah let's let's get a little bit more tactical like that's kind of like this uh we've been pulling our audience and you've been cool enough to kind of roll with us there <laughs> on the fly right before this hey man i'm let's do it dude yeah no i think it's gonna be good so um tell us a little bit about the story you know i know you got your your start in a different way and it was kind of through you know everything crashing down it seemed like at the time 
Yeah. So um, originally, before I before I got into uh, the agency uh, digital marketing world, my background is actually IT. So I started off as a uh, network administrator for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you know anything about the IT industry, especially within the government, you have a lot of downtime. So I will always <laughs> be online, you know, looking for different ways to make money. So, you know, I, I learned about like affiliate marketing and, um, you know, about, you know, SEO and all this stuff like way back in like in like 2002, 2004. So I've always had an interest in it. Um, but I actually wound up transitioning into real estate um, around 2005. I actually started uh, buying and selling houses in Atlanta, Georgia. And that was really like my first foray to walking away from my job and like just being all in full time entrepreneur. Um, and then fast forward around 2007, a lot of the people who were buying from me locally, they started to dry up. So I'm like, man, I need to I need to figure out how I can, you know, market and sell my houses. Um, now, mind you, I've, I've always still been in and around the Internet marketing space. You know, so, you know, YouTube was new, you know, Facebook was new. Was new. I was like, man, let me, you know, let me see if I can actually start uploading my properties to YouTube and start doing some SEO optimization and rank these videos and see if I can start attracting buyers mm -hmm. from out of state. So that's what I started doing. And I started recording all of my wholesale properties, uploading them, optimizing them, and I actually started getting lead flow. And uh, I wound up going to a seminar uh, in November of 2007. And I was just sharing with some guys, you know, what I was doing. And uh, and the guy that put on the event, uh, Chris Dago, actually, mm -hmm. uh, him and Chris Chico, um, he was like, "Hey, man, why don't you you know put together a presentation and you know, you know, come share about what you know what you're doing?" So I'm like, "All right, cool." So um, I put together a presentation, you know, crushed it. And then it was another guy there that was in attendance. He's like, "Man, you know what? We need to turn this into a product." So because they owned at the time a social network specifically for real estate investors. He's like, "Man, we can teach other real estate investors how to do this because nobody's doing this stuff." I was like, all right, bet. So I created the content. Um, they sold it and we wound up doing like two million dollars in sales in like 18 months with this you know digital product. So that's how I transitioned into the information marketing space specifically um, for real estate investors. Um, and then fast forward a few years, you know, I had that success. Um, I started doing some uh, real estate coaching. Um, we built uh, wound up building a uh, software platform specifically for real estate investors called REO Go Miner because obviously the crash happened in, in 2008, mm -hmm. and uh, and we were and I was focused pretty much exclusively on driving traffic to grow that business using the Google Display Network. Mm -hmm. And and right around 2009, if you remember, there was a huge Google slap, right? Yep. So banning like anyone, so anyone that was just running like straight landing pages, opt-in pages, like. You couldn't do that stuff anymore. And a lot of the real estate info guys at the time, like that was the only traffic source. So when they started getting their account shut down, they know that I was actively still running. So I started doing some consulting work. Um, and I realized like, man, like this is cool. Like, you know, I'm helping get people either get their accounts back or showing them how to actually run ads compliantly. And they just pay me a fee to do it. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I like this. <laughs> yeah. So I started the agency. Um, right. So kind of kind of happened by accident. And uh and, and that's where we started at. We started with Google Display. This was even before Facebook, you know, had a ads platform, really. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, kind of how we got to the agency world. That's cool. Yeah, I got booted off Google in 2009, actually. It took me like three years to get back on Google, too. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <Call> me, man. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you still doing a lot of Google stuff or is it primarily uh, Facebook ads now? So so over the years, it's transitioned to where we're primarily um, on Facebook. Uh, however, we still run Google as well, primarily retargeting because it really helps support um, what we're doing on the front end on Facebook. But we've also started transitioning to doing a lot more YouTube now, um, mm. simply because YouTube is a, I mean, it's a monster in terms of scale. Yeah. Um, and, you know, surprisingly, you actually have a lot more leeway in terms of what you can say and do with YouTube videos versus, you know, Facebook. It's kind of like they've, they flip flopped. It's like all yeah. of the compliance department from Google left and went to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> More money over there, whatever. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, so yeah. But we are really heavy uh, on uh, from a from a cold traffic standpoint. We we're probably still eighty percent um, Facebook um, and then twenty percent Google. Sweet. Well, there's really kind of two things that, that I think we want to talk about on this this episode. It's traffic and webinars, right? Probably primarily Facebook traffic. Maybe we'll touch on a little more YouTube stuff too. And webinars. Do you think 
you think it's better to start with like the webinar or driving the traffic? Probably, probably the webinar, right? Because that's what you're going to drive the traffic into. One hundred percent, man. You know, when when it comes to to traffic, um, you know, and, and specifically if you're going to be buying and spending money, um, you know, to you know to convert high ticket clients, and because that's really like what we specialize in in the webinar space. So most of the clients that we work with, they sell. Um, you know, high ticket products, right? So high ticket being anywhere from like a thousand to three thousand mm-hmm. um, dollars, or they're uh, running a application funnel where we're still running to a webinar, but as opposed to a direct sale, the call to action is for application. Mm-hmm. Um, but one hundred percent, the focus should always be the offer because ultimately, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what your traffic source is, and even if you don't do traffic right in terms of like targeting and messaging if you have a a good offer and the offer converts like you can make the traffic work Mm -hmm. and i I think a lot of times you know uh, especially when people who are you know kind of coming into the space they don't really spend the time on an offer and especially as an agency i've I've worked with so many people and they want to make all of these changes as as opposed to the offer i'm like all of that stuff is nice and pretty but until your offer is dialed in and it's and it's converting at, at a certain conversion rate to where you can at least break even on the front end, mm. then all that other stuff is irrelevant. Yeah. So, you know, I, I tell people, focus on your offer, your first objective um, with your webinar, specifically if you're selling a digital product, is get to break even. Because you can if you can at least acquire customers at zero cost then you can definitely get into profitability you know with it once you properly optimize and you you know find different ways to increase your overall uh customer value yeah so mm-hmm. it's, it's it's definitely all about the offer um with the high ticket funnels when you're selling more so coaching and consulting um you have a little bit more leeway in that um you can afford to spend more to acquire customers because you know most of my clients specifically who are selling those type of programs are charging a minimum of five grand mm-hmm. upwards to thirty thousand dollars. So you know, versus if you're selling a digital product for only a thousand dollars, you know, you can only spend a thousand dollars to get to break even. Well, you know, technically, I could spend two thousand dollars and still be in profitability mm-hmm. on a five thousand dollar offer to acquire that that customer. So yeah, it just right. depends on. Yeah, when you're trying to break even like that and get like say a high ticket, you know, say a three thousand dollar offer to convert, do you have like any kind of thing or an offer before that, or is it all just going straight to that webinar? Straight to webinar, mm-hmm. just 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 straight straight to webinar, right? Um, so you know, we generally just run ads. So obviously, we have a sequence of how we put together the ad structure, right? So we have you know prospecting, you know, which is really mainly top of funnel, cold traffic, and then you know, middle funnel. So middle funnel would be, you know, people who have, um, you know, maybe uh, registered, but they didn't attend. So, you know, obviously we'll have messaging to drop people back to like a replay and then like bottom of funnel you know, campaigns focusing primarily on people who um, attended, but, you know, they didn't purchase, you know, and driving those individuals back. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we, we focus primarily um, on, um, on getting all of that top of funnel traffic to convert, right? Mm -hmm. So there's certain key metrics that we like to focus on, right? So um, first thing we do is really determine on what type of budget do we need to allocate to get enough statistically valid data Mm -hmm. to say that, hey, this webinar works or this webinar doesn't work. You know, so I would say minimum of at least, you know, 200 people on a webinar initially to actually, and when I say 200 people, I mean registrations, but to actually watch the webinar yeah. to get some initial feedback as to, you know, how well this webinar performs or not. So if I'm running a, um, a live webinar initially, so, cause if it's a new offer and it's not proven, you may have to do a few iteration iterations of it to really get it dialed in. Mm-hmm. So, so when we run that, we'll say, okay, well, we're at a $3,000 price point. We need to reverse engineer and see, okay, how many people do we need to get on here? And how much money do we need to spend initially for uh, to get some to get that um, to get that initial amount of data, right? Mm-hmm. And depending on what type of funds you have available, um, that's going to that's going to determine how fast you can go, right? So if we want to do this within a week, because anytime we're doing live uh, webinars, um, we don't 
we don't run ads no further than five days out. And, you know, mm-hmm. any, any anything further than that, like your show up rate is going to just really, really bomb. So the maximum is around five, five days out. Right. So mm-hmm. if my goal is to put at least um, 200 people on, I, I know in most niches we should be able to get registrations at around ten dollars. So that's kind of like a baseline threshold. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, a minimum show up rate of around 20 five percent right so in that particular scenario you know uh to get a live attendee it's going to cost me around forty dollars so in that particular scenario i'm going to spend eight thousand dollars to get 200 live attendees to that webinar now because it's a three thousand dollar price point you know in order for me to get to break even i really only need to convert at three percent and uh uh, minimum, right? Not even really three percent. I really need to convert it. Let's see, uh, one, two. Because if we're doing two, if we have two hundred people, then you know one percent would be two sales at six thousand. So two percent um, would get us in. Technically, that would get us into profitability. Profit. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so if we're at a two percent conversion rate, then I know okay, we we got some legs with this thing. We can go. And you know, and two percent seems low, but for a three thousand dollar offer to cold traffic, like that's actually pretty decent. And, and it's ideally, just breaking even, right? Like that's your that, first goal. That's the first goal, right? And then from there, it's just, you know, getting feedback, um, seeing what objections come up uh, on, you know, on the webinar. So that way we can overcome those objections in the webinar. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing, you know, like the, the offer stack, like, you know, are people like taking up, the, taking up the offer? How can we improve upon that? And over a few iterations, you can jump, you can get that 2% to 4%, right? Mm-hmm. So, and then from there, then now we can take it and now we can take it evergreen because we know the cold traffic after running the cold traffic, we're having a consistent conversion rate of 4% on a $3,000 on a $3,000 offer. So I already know for, you know, for every, you know, hundred people that I put on the webinar, if it costs me, you know, $4,000, I'm going to generate 12,000. So I'll, you know, I'll do a three row ass. Um, mm-hmm. on that particular webinar, you know, and that's really good for cold traffic. Yeah. And, and 2% off of 200 people. That's, I mean, it's only four people. So you really only need, so out of 200 people showing up, you really only need four people to buy, yeah. which doesn't sound like that big of a number when you say it like that. But I think, I think what, <laughs> like where, where I'm sort of hung up is like, is on the pricing. Cause you know, the, the sort of common wisdom is like more of an ascension model, right? You got like the, the trip wire to get them in the thing at like $10 and then I send them up to like a $99 product. And then maybe you're going for like the higher ticket stuff, but it sounds like you're getting them on a webinar and just going right for it. So I, my philosophy is that I rather get the low hanging fruit and I, my approach is more of a, a descension model as opposed to an ascension model. Uh-huh. Um, I don't think as long as you have a offer that can really add value is transformational and, and people, the value proposition is like a no brainer to where, of course, I'll spend $3,000 because is going to yield this result. I'll be able to make thirty thousand dollars, or whatever yeah. the case may be. If the value proposition is there, mm-hmm. the number is never the issue. The problem is, is most people have a have a challenge conveying the value proposition to justify the price point. So you know they want to take people through this ascension process where they warm them up, they build relationships, they build rapport, and not to say that doesn't work because people build multi million dollar, billion dollar companies with that model. I think that model absolutely works. It's just a much longer process and it's going to cost you a lot more money to really dial that in, right? Yeah. Because in order to do $12,000 off of a, a $97 product, you got to sell a hell of a lot more um, uh, customers as opposed to, you know, four customers, right? right? So if I'm doing a good job in terms of my creative um, and messaging, and in my targeting in my ads, you know, I rather have four of the right customers than you know two hundred you know low ticket customers that may never buy a three thousand dollar thing. So that's just my personal yeah. philosophy and approach. You know, there's a, a million ways to skin a cat. Um, you know, especially in the online you know marketing space. But I found that most effective, especially when you're spending money on traffic. If you're spending yeah, yeah. money on ads, the more yeah. money you can spend to acquire a customer, the better. I can outspend you. If me and you are going after the same, you know, mm-hmm. the same type of people, 
um, you know, some of the same interests, the same target, you know, I'm going to blow, I'm going a, I'm to a beat you in, yeah. in the, uh, I'm going to beat you in the auction every day because I could spend way more money to acquire that customer than you can. So Yeah. And you just said it's, it's always an auction. So <laughs> and that's the thing. If you're starting with a decent model, you got the low hanging fruit. The beauty is you're doing retargeting. So it's not like if they buy, don't buy there, you don't have something else probably lined up for them or another variation. 100%. Because, you know, think about it. In the, in the initial model that we discussed, right, where we're spending $8,000 to get 200 people on, to get 100 people on, you know, you got to realize we're spending an average of $10 per registration. So that's 8,000 people that we have on our database. So any of those people, once they cycle through that webinar process, if, if they don't buy, if I have other low ticket products, I can easily now just put those people into an automated sequence mm -hmm. and then just downsell them, or I can drive them to a phone call. You know, so you you can increase the value of those leads over time. You know, so if you have other offers, other big ticket offers, or low ticket offers, or even a continuity play, um, there's definitely ways to monetize that list. But that, but doing it that way allows you to get to break even much faster, as well as grow your your list you know mm -hmm. way faster than you would if you were doing more of a low ticket model yeah no i like it because it's like most people that do approach webinars are a lot of them that we've chatted with it's like okay stick a tripwire type offer in the front to you know clear your costs there and then everything else is just kind of gravy but i just like this just yeah, just figure out it. your numbers <laughs> yeah and just go for it it's like you gotta have the balls for the budget whatever your budget ends up being you know but like once you get past that that's kind of seems like the biggest barrier once you get the conversion rate down yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, look, you got to commit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, are you in this game to, you know, just make you know, uh, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars or you want to make, you know, a few million dollars, right? So that's right. Was, go ahead, well, I was going to say when it, when it comes to the webinars, is is there like sort of a, a breakdown or like a process that you, you would walk somebody through? Like, I've got a product. I want to I want to start doing webinars. Is there like a some sort of like what, what would be my first step of even like starting to plan a webinar? Sure. So I, I think one of the things is that you have to really get clear on um, what it is that you're offering. Right. So you're mm -hmm. off the, again, going back to the offer. Right. And then who is going to be the ideal um, target customer like for that offer? Like who is going to actually spend money? Right. So, you know, it really kind of starts with like the research. So having an idea of what it is that you want to bring to the marketplace. And one of the things that, you know, one of the ways I like to look at it is like, okay, what can, what can I bring into the marketplace? Uh, you know, that's a blue ocean, like a big, you know, offer a big general offer, but um, it has uh, some sort, some sort of unique selling proposition or some sort of unique mechanism that clearly differentiates me from everyone else and being able to develop that. So even if there's people who, who have maybe similar products, you mm -hmm. can only get this one thing if you come here, right? So mm -hmm. that's automatically going to give me um, a, a better position, mm -hmm. right, right in, in the marketplace. And then um, thinking about the then the value proposition, like how can I make this you know, irres irresistible, right? So it's like seeing what's already out there in a marketplace and then just making making the offer to where it's like so ridiculous that there's so much value not only and i don't just mean value in terms of like the amount of training mm -hmm. you know a lot of times people about equate value with the amount of training yeah. but more so the the outcome and the desire right because ultimately like this product needs to solve a problem and it needs to help people uh, get a very specific outcome so if i can show people that this product will help them get a very specific outcome and that outcome is 10 times the value of what the investment is and then i have social proof hmm. to back that up and then i you know have case studies and testimonials to support those claims i mean that's, that's risk reversal all that yeah. All, yeah all of that stuff yeah i like you it know? and then when it, when it comes to webinars as well like I, I feel like there's a little sort of contention around this point because uh, talking to different people around webinars, they have different philosophies on like the the sort of percentage of content versus pitch versus telling your story and, and, and that sort of stuff. Do you have sort of like a ratio that, that you like to have as far as like, you know, introducing who you are, edifying yourself, uh, putting content in front of them and pitching? Because I've seen webinars where you got on, they tell you who they are, and then the rest of the thing is just a pitch. And then I've been on some where the entire thing is like peer training, and then there's a very soft pitch at the end, you know? So like, 
what's sort of your ratio and, and flow for the webinars? Well, there's not an exact, there's not an exact formula mm -hmm. um, per se. I mean, I, I know that people have templatized and there's mm -hmm. frameworks and things like that. Um, my philosophy is that in terms of webinar length, the webinar needs to be as long as necessary to convey all the information for people to make a buying decision. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whether, so whether if that's, you know, an hour or whether it's three hours mm -hmm. in terms of content, I do believe that if someone leaves that webinar, whether they chose the buy or not, they should have received an immense amount of value. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so as long as you're educating people and giving them insight, because here's the thing, the product is what is going to show them, you know, um, exactly how to do the thing, right? Mm -hmm. So you can teach all about the what, right? Mm -hmm. What it is, what what components they need, and then this product is just going to help expedite that process and help you get that desired outcome. But mm -hmm. you can take the what of everything that I talked to you, and you can go out there. And, you know, you can figure it out. It's probably going to take you a lot longer, cost you a lot more money, a lot of more pain and suffering. But if you want to avoid all of that, then, you know, you can do this. But absolutely, people should feel like, man, like that was a great webinar. I actually, I learned some stuff. I got some value. And if I don't have the money, when I do get the money, I'm going to go buy that thing. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. always like that whole thing. It's like, oh, man, I would want I'd want to share this with my business partner or with, with whatever colleague out there, even if they don't buy. It's like that's right. kind of that impression when you walk away. Yeah. I, I feel like the, the, the best webinars I've been on are the ones that like they provide you with like new insights. Like you're sitting on the on the webinar going, ooh, like I didn't know that existed or like new aha moments that you mm -hmm. didn't think about. But by the end mm -hmm. of the webinar, you're like, that's really interesting. I learned a lot of new stuff. I don't actually know how to take action on this stuff yet. But like now I know this exists. Right. So it's like you get these insights about you're now aware that this potential exists and this product is the answer to tap into that potential. 100%, 100%. And, you know, and, and, you know, that's, that, that's actually um, a good point because I mean, you know, if, if you guys, and I know you guys probably read breakthrough advertising with Eugene Schwartz mm -hmm. is talking about the different levels of customer sophistication. Right. right. So like, you know, the, you know, level one, like they're not even aware, right. Level two, like they're, they're, they're aware, but they're not necessarily solution aware. Right. So like those level two and level three people are ideal, right. Cause they know that, you know, this opportunity exists, um, but I'm not really aware of a solution of how to get like this result. Right. So, you know, if you, if, if you're, if you craft your webinar and you're speaking to those level two, level three people, you're opening, you are opening them up with insights. And I like to, I like to frame it as understanding concepts, right? Because a lot of times there's new information that people uh, may not be familiar with, or there's like technical stuff that's kind of involved. Mm -hmm. and, and I always tell people, look, I'm going to share some things that may not be familiar, but don't even worry about that. Focus on the concepts, because if you can conceptualize the outcome, even if you don't know all of the, the how and the what, you, like it'll click, right? So, so that's like how I like to position stuff. I like that, man, because uh, yeah, a lot of people just get right into the weeds of things, you know. In a webinar, they get technical, they get into strategies and all that stuff. But I, I feel like they're they're not understanding the target market. They're not speaking to them as a whole, you know. And thinking of the eighty percent of folks are probably not the tacticians, but if you give them context and and kind of allow them to see what all the pieces are, they can start to kind of connect them mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. probably give you a better chance of converting them into a sale. I'd imagine one hundred percent. Yeah. Talk about, um, I'm, I'm curious about the, so I know you're big into automated webinars. So what happens, like once you dial in that live thing, what, what does it look like to transition that into an auto webinar? Well, the beautiful part is once you get the, the live one dialed in, it's not that much different um, because you already, by that time, you've already identified the audiences that work, you know, exactly what, what creatives perform the best. You already have the landing page dialed in. So the only really difference is, is that you're just transitioning, you know, kind of that experience from like a lot, you know, from a live experience to more of an automated experience. Yeah. And you still have the ability to do it as a like live. So, for example, some of the clients that we work with, we run, you know, like live automated webinars. Right. So it's a scheduled date, scheduled time. There's specific there's a specific email sequence that goes out that uh, when people register, um, they get some some uh, emails dripped on them and then, you know, the, the follow up emails um, and SMS text reminders leading up mm. to the webinar. Uh, and then there's a post webinar sequence with a close down, shut down and then it's done. 
right? So you literally can take that same format that a lot of people run on the live webinars and transition it to an automated uh, structure, right? So that way you don't have to be live presenting. Yeah. Um, so the, the transition is really not not that difficult. I mean, there's obviously some technical, you know, tech implications. or anything probably. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just some technical implications in terms of the the setup and infrastructure, making sure you have the right the right platforms and making sure all the you know automations are are there um, and set up. But you know, once that stuff is in place, I mean, it, it just it just runs and it's just tweaking mm -hmm. from there, right? So you continue you're still testing like on the front end, like different ads, different creatives. You know, constantly dialing that in, and then obviously you're still, you know, watching and making sure that your numbers, um, you know, are either increasing or that they're not dropping off, right? That you're maintaining, you know, those conversion rates. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 not that big of a transition once you really get that uh, that that live dialed in. Yeah, th th this question might actually sort of transition into like Facebook ads and the targeting a little bit. But I'm one of the our biggest struggles when we've run webinars, we've actually kind of stopped running webinars for the past several months because we've really struggled with actually getting people to show up. Mm -hmm. We actually don't struggle to get people to register. We're getting people to after they register, actually show up for the webinar. And it almost feels like what, what's been happening is everybody kind of knows the webinar game now. Everybody knows what you're doing. Everybody knows, OK, they're going to run this webinar. Um, it's going to be live for this window. But then the very next day, they're going to put out a replay and I'm going to be able to watch the replay. You know, like people kind of know the flow of webinars. And so I think that really sort of affects our, our show up rates on actually getting people to show up to the webinar. So, you know, do you have any advice or, or, or you know, any tips on, on actually getting the people to show up after they registered? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and also, I want to say that there's a, there's a caveat to that because you're 100 percent correct. You know, as it relates to the Internet marketing, digital marketing space. Yeah, right. like we're super sophisticated. Right. So. Right seen it all but outside of the outside of this space that's that's not the case at all right and and you still get you still get those very high show up rates because i we run webinars in some niches right like right now like i have a client in the nursing space she consistently gets 30 percent plus wow. you know show up rates um you know on on her you know uh live webinars right, right? Um, and, and even in the real estate space, like we have consistently get like, you know, 30, 35 percent show up rates or, or higher to the live webinars. Mm -hmm. um, I think in terms of best practices, um, you definitely got to have a strong reminder sequence. So, um, you know, generally outside of the initial welcome email, um, there should be an email reminder that goes out um, 24 hours before the mm -hmm. webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, another email reminder that goes out seven hours before. Uh, a three a three hour reminder email and then um, one hour and then uh, 15 minutes and then on that 15 minutes there's also a corresponding uh, SMS text message that mm -hmm. also goes out to push people to join the webinar as well um, just kind of following you know that sequence you know you should be able to consistently get a minimum of a 25 percent um, or more uh, show up rate even in the digital marketing space. Dude, that's that's amazing, and I think the follow up is where people just drop the ball. Even sophisticated marketers, I see that like just like what I don't know. It's like yeah, everyone's kind of focused on registrants, registrants load the front it's end, crazy. but it's like you come spend on, all this money you spend yeah. all this money to get the registrants. Like, why wouldn't you <laughs> right. send out the marketing pieces to make sure that those people show up? And, and, oh, and then a, a reminder, a, a reminder ad too. Um, so I was going to ask about all, that. Yeah, like yeah, retargeting. So, all, so yeah. all people who register. You know, obviously they're 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 pixel and they're put into that audience. Hey, reminder, webinar is coming up. Webinar is coming up, and uh, and then run that uh, run that ad um, to the entire audience. You know, all placements. So I don't care where they go. They're going webinars coming up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everywhere, YouTube, uh, yeah, Google, all that stuff. Yeah. Everything. Now, do you always do a replay, or do you ever do you ever say, hey, there's going to be no replay on this one, and really like push the scarcity of getting on live? Yeah, so um, I don't I don't think we've done that. Most of the stuff that we have set up with my clients is pretty pretty automated. Mm -hmm. uh, there and there is a replay that goes out, um, but then you know there's also like a, a shutdown time too, right? Where it's like mm -hmm. okay, this is coming down, this is coming down. So there's still that element of scarcity, but it's not it's not an element to where uh, it's not a replay because you know again in the marketing space, I think that's more relevant. And even, and even in the marketing space, when they say there's not going to re there's not going to be a replay. There's not, there's an encore. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> it's just another word. That's it. <laughs> so, 
Come on. So, yeah, sophisticated <laughs> marketers aren't going to leave money on the table like, you know, that obvious. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's pr- probably been our biggest issue with trying to run webinars is we're trying to be marketers marketing to marketers. And that's sure. a struggle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I, and, and we've I've, I've heard people say this before, but even even especially now, more so than ever, like marketers, especially in the in the digital marketing space, if you've been in this game for, you know, three to five years, like you have you're more knowledgeable than probably 97 percent of the people that are out there you know most people have probably heard of zoom Mm -hmm. most people you know may have maybe heard of you know wordpress but most people still don't know what a funnel is most people still don't know where where retargeting is like they they the the masses don't get it but because we're kind of like in this bubble and we talk to each other our assumption is that everyone is sophisticated and 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 that's just not the case now if you're marketing to marketers 100 percent, but there's a whole other uh set of people who need this information especially because now a lot of people were forced yeah. to yeah. come into the online marketing game that are great sales people they have great offers they've just been doing everything offline mm-hmm. but now they've been forced to conduct business um and and honestly like everything that has taken place in 2020, you know, with COVID, um, it actually really helped our business mm-hmm. because a lot of people were forced to come off of the road. They were forced to now begin to transition to deliver their events, you know, virtually. So they're like, okay, I need to figure out how to put on events. I need to figure out how to get leads. So you have all of these, all of these people um, that you know. It's, so it's kind of been like a, a a go rush almost, you know, for for people transitioning. So it's it's actually been awesome, you know. And I think it's also increased the level of awareness that people realize. Like, I need to have an online customer acquisition process, even if I have a brick and mortar business. Yeah. I need to be able to find have be able to find my customers online to increase that foot traffic, or even just that order and delivery traffic. Yeah. Mm. No, I mean you, you make a good point too in that. We, we, we kind of forget how much we know compared to the rest of the business world. I, I remember I was talking to somebody a few weeks ago who has a brick and mortar business and I sort of explained the concept of an autoresponder of like, hey, you know, when you collect an email, you can just make automatic emails go out to that person after you've collected that email. And it was like a mind blowing experience for them that that even exists out there. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. but it's, it's perfect. Like you said, there's it's it's a acquisition funnel that every business can have and i feel like attention spans are probably i mean i don't know i'm curious actually do you see any new trends now that people are at home or they're working at home kids are at home with webinars well yeah i mean obviously for for a time especially when all stuff first happened um like you know usage was was up um costs were down like it was just like 2015 16. for like a month or two right yeah for like a month or two yeah. right um because all the advertisers pull pull their ads so it was like man let's just go you know let's just go crazy with it um but yeah I, I i do agree that you know the the commodity now is is attention right so mm-hmm. you have to figure out um and this is where this is really where um true marketing comes in, in in my opinion right you have to be able to position yourself in a marketplace or at least pique someone's interest and curious curiosity enough to be able to to get them off of you know facebook or mm-hmm. off of youtube and bring them into your world and then hold that attention and i, I think that's when the skill set of, of really understanding copy, um, the psychology of how people operate and think, um, really how to um, how to communicate through written word, uh, through video, and in such a way that compels people um, at a visceral level to want to know more, right? To really be able to bypass, you know, their consciousness, to talk to the subconsciousness, uh, to be able to really like trigger them to want to pull them in, right? And no, and I think that that's really where you know, tr- like real marketers separate themselves because anybody can set up a Facebook ad, anybody can buy ClickFunnels, um, but you know, but to understand, you know, the the market to understand how to com- effectively communicate and do that, like that's just something that just comes with experience of time. And then when you lay 
um, you know, the technical expertise over that and to really understand how to leverage the technology in terms of, you know, segmentation, audiences, uh, following up, you know, multi-channel marketing, you know, that really makes you a force to be reckoned with. And, and, and I think that, you know, again, like the people who do have those skill sets really, you know, they undervalue, I've even undervalued mm -hmm. that, you know, and, and, you know, and that's changed obviously in terms of like my pricing, yeah. but, you know, especially now, but man, I, I think, you know, developing, those skills as a marketer is is super critical because the technology is going to continue to evolve the platforms are going to continue to evolve but what's not evolving anywhere near that speed is the, the human psyche mm -hmm. so i, I think it, it makes more sense to really delve deep into um you know human psychology um you know learn neuro-linguistic programming you know really dig into the psychology of copywriting and, and understand you know what triggers and compels people and moves people and then being able to effectively communicate that then the only thing I have to do is just put put the message in front of them with the traffic. Yeah, it's just use the tools that are available at the time, but that doesn't change. Exactly. Like you mentioned Eugene Schwartz and Breakthrough Advertising. That's whatever, a hundred year old book or so. Or maybe not is that, it that old. old? <laughs> maybe it's not that old, man, but it's it's older. Yeah. yeah. And um what are some other resources that you'd recommend for people to learn like NLP and, and all the influence? I mean, obviously influence the book is a great one. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what other things do you kind of reference or recommend others? Um, so there's a there's a lot of great books out there on uh, influence pers and persuasion. Uh, you know, like you said, influence Cialdini. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll tell you because that's just one of the things that um, I, I I have a genuine just interest in and mm -hmm. just and just learning for my for myself. Um, but I'll go through my list. So I'm actually reading one now by John Bandler. John Bandler is actually the the creator of uh, NLP. It's called Mani mm -hmm. Ma manipulation. I know that sounds bad. But <laughs> <laughs> Manipulation is an uh, NLP guide to emotional intelligence, body language secrets, and stoicism. Ooh, it's a really good one. That's cool. That's the other thing, like body language and stuff. It's so, uh, yeah. I mean, that's probably the webinars could obviously, if you have a live element to it, that would be a good thing to study as well. If you have video oh, on that, is mm -hmm. one hundred. And uh, persuasion is a really good one too. Yep. It's it's Aldini as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Persuasion. Um, and. I, I literally have a, a whole a whole bunch of books. Uh, I'm, there's one by Richard Avant called NLP Mastery. Um, that's that's actually a, a pretty good one. I think I have that one. Yeah, I don't think I've read it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I love this. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm just I got, I got a whole list. Uh, Psycho uh, Cybernetics. Uh, that's I think a that's a classic. That everyone that's an should. amazing one. Yeah, yeah. Maxwell Maltz, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually an audio version with Dan Kennedy on Audible, and Dan and he, he, Dan Kennedy reads Maxwell Malt's book, but then Dan Kennedy goes and adds his own sort of additional feedback really? on top as he's reading through the chapters. Oh, I got to get that one. Yeah. Um, Pitch Anything by Oren Claff. That's that's actually a, a solid book, too. Yeah. Got, and, that's and, a solid uh, one. Have you read... Um, uh, he's got to split the difference. Oh, Chris Voss. Chris Voss. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I have not, and I've heard I, I heard about it, and I, I just need to uh, to get that one. Check it out. It's, yeah, it's not NLP, but it's definitely persuasion. <laughs> it's insane, but, man. But but this one here is a super super good book. Oh yeah, dude, that's from uh, yeah Alvado Ab Albuquerque yeah, from yeah. Uh, uh, Agora. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sixteen word sales that are like it's a light read. I think it gives like all the basic pr uh, principles. Um, so like just if you're just starting out and you're not like, you know, you don't have I mean, those are every all the research we gave are great. But like if you want to like implement something right away, mm. man, yeah. 60 word sales letter. That's right. Awesome. Yeah, that's, yeah, that that book is actually probably one of the books I've recommended the most to other people who want to get into copywriting. I'm like, start with this one. Yeah. And if you like that, I'll give you some more books to go deeper down the rabbit right. hole. We've, we've used it multiple times after we got that book like yeah. for other you know, random sales pieces all over the place, not just webinars. Um what, what what we didn't we we didn't talk a lot about ads, but like let's get into it. Yeah, let's do it. So I don't know where to start. Like obviously yeah. you want to connect. I mean, we're talking about messaging, NLP, persuasion, all that. Mm -hmm. So I would assume the messaging from the you know the the core offer, the webinar itself, is going to translate to ads. One hundred percent, and and that's actually our our process. So when we so when we're working with clients. You know, one of the first things that we ask them outside of like their avatar and like all that stuff, like we, we get into that. But I, I tell them, give me your webinar. 
because while what both myself and, and also our in-house copywriter does is we actually watch the webinar mm -hmm. and we take notes from the webinar and we take like all, all the bullet points, all of the, you know, the, the pain points, all the different objections and everything. So we ex literally extract all of the copy from the webinars because we also do um, we also build out like the full automated webinar funnel. So that means we're doing the landing pages, we're writing the headlines, we're coming mm -hmm. up with the bullets um, in addition to writing uh, the ads. Right. And and we prefer like long form copy, especially on Facebook. So so we extract all of that information from the ads. And, and I, you know, I have a, a framework, you know, that we that we follow for how we actually write and structure the ads themselves. But, you know, Facebook has evolved to the point to where the algorithm is extremely, extremely smart, um, smarter than any of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I, I, and I think that especially like some of the people has been around for a while, um, you know, we, we tend to still want to have like that control because <laughs> like, Oh, I'm not going to, you know, give that to Facebook, but that, that's not the, you don't have to, you don't have to work that hard anymore. Yeah. Like, it, like it, it, you really don't, even if you're targeting is not, like 100 on like that's okay right if, if the copy is somewhat decent like facebook can figure out who those people are who are going to interact so um so i'll just i'll walk you through like our, our our basic structure like how we actually set up campaigns and i'm talking specifically to facebook um so obviously before we even launch the campaign um i, I want to say this because i think it's one of the most common things that i see people do and i and i, I cringe when i go back and i look at data and the, how they set up their and structured their tracking, right? Because um, I'm, I'm a data person. So um, your Facebook pixel, put your main master Facebook pixel on every single page in your funnel, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Like that, that should go without saying, but put it there. Because mm -hmm. I mean, check out pages anywhere traffic is going to flow to. Pixel should be there. It, it's funny because Joe and I, whenever we see a website, we always have we have the Facebook Pixel Helper Chrome extension, right? Heck whenever yeah. we see a website that doesn't have a pixel, we're like, these guys don't know what they're doing with marketing. Like, what is wrong <laughs> with you? <laughs> but yeah, right. carry on. So, so that, and then, and the same thing. Uh, put 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 on put the uh, put on your AdWords, uh, AdWords or uh, Google Tag Manager or Analytics, yeah. one of them, because you can mm -hmm. create you know everything off all of it, but but those two main things. So first and foremost, but, um, and then have a event for every step in your funnel. The caveat is do not use the new events manager tool and also do not create events that are URL based. And the reason that I say that is because if your funnel changes or if you create another page, mm. then you cannot optimize for that custom event anymore because it's tied specifically to that URL. So use code base events. So that way, doesn't matter what URL you use. It doesn't matter if you're split testing and switching anything out. As long as you take that little piece of code, you can put it on any single page. Yeah. And it just like, like I have people have come like, oh yeah, well we want to, you know, switch all this stuff over and we're going to optimize it. I'm like, yeah, but you know, you got like, you know, 20,000 conversions on this URL and we can no longer optimize for that. Yeah. yeah it's like you've already started it with that. So that's it. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's it. So, you know, so don't lock yourself in use. So that, so that's my rant on that. Um, so in terms of campaign structure, so when we launch a campaigns, um, generally if a, if a client comes to us, they would generally have some data. So we'll start there. Um, so generally they'll have a customer list, an email list, Obviously, we upload, upload, upload those. If they have customer lists, we not only do we export like the customers, but we also uh, export all of the uh, sales values, right? So that we can create a value-based lookalike audience, right? Because you know you can actually upload like what, how much that customer spent, right? So Facebook will actually create a lookalike not just off of that that information, like for like name and email, but also off of what amount of money they spent, right? So you yeah. have a higher quality. A lookalike audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then also, um, if obviously the page, so we'll create um, an audience off of people who've engaged with any posts or ads on their page uh, for the past 365 days. We'll create a lookalike audience off of that, and then we'll also create it off of their uh, IG as well. So generally, customer lists, um, email lists, uh, page, um, IG, 
So those are like the, the four like lookalike audiences that we'll start with. And then we'll also build a cold interest based audience that will stack. Right. Mm -hmm. So based on who their target uh, demographic is, we'll create an interest based audience. So we'll have a, at minimum of, you know, four to five different audiences that we'll start with. Yeah. Okay. Now, depending on how much budget they have allocated, you know, generally we'll start with like a five hundred dollars a day campaign. If they have a lower budget, you can do it with a lower budget. But um, because we primarily run CBO campaign campaign budget optimization when we launch our campaigns, mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to have a, a decent sized budget to give Facebook enough to, to actually optimize with. Right. So we'll have one campaign uh, CBO. We'll put uh, we'll have uh, one audience per ad set okay so mm -hmm. at the asset level we'll have each of those audiences broken up into their own assets so we have five audiences we'll have five ad sets and then at the ad level um we'll do dynamic creative mm -hmm. we'll have a minimum of two post texts okay two, with two headlines and then we'll have at least five creative right so generally two images three videos or three videos two images any combination of both right so and, and that's the and that's the campaign structure right so mm -hmm. you know cbo conversion optimized for registrations okay one audience per ad set dynamic ads five creative two post text okay. and then just turn <laughs> it on and let facebook do its thing now if we have good ctr good click-through rates um and good engagement but we're not getting registrations then i know there's a disconnect with the landing page and I'm going to tweak the headline. Now, if no one's just even clicking on the ads or we have, you know, a click through rate below 2%, really, really 3% below that, then, okay, there's a creative issue. Then we may need to, uh, to tweak that, or there's an issue with but one of the audiences, but out of those five audiences is generally not going to be an audience, uh, audience issue. It's usually a creative issue. Um, now if we're seeing, we're getting good leads, we're getting good click throughs, people are registering. Um, it's within KPI. We're not getting any sales, then obviously it's the webinar, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then we just optimize like based on that. And then we scale up based on what type of conversion rate we see from the webinar itself. Yeah, no, I love I love the the, the sort of ad structure because it actually does make it real simple because once you've set that up, I mean, that's going to go collect a ton of data, right? Because so campaign much. budget optimization is going to figure out the ideal ad set for you. And then under the ad set, the dynamic creative is going to figure out the ideal sort of combination of of exactly. like creative and text and it's you just let go testing. it's built in multivariate testing with ai like, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> the best so ai out there yeah right so you're gonna you're gonna beat that <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna optimize better than that yeah so, you can but it'll take a lot a lot hard, you have to work a lot harder at it yeah, spend a lot more money yeah <laughs> so this, this is probably kind of getting into the weeds a little bit but when you set up like a a, a cold target audience are you like mm -hmm. bundling a whole bunch of things into that cold target audience or are you just doing like I'm targeting this one thing. Like I'm targeting people who like fishing or am I targeting like people who like fishing, people who like hunting, people who, uh, you know, buy fishing boat, you know, are you grouping a bunch sure. together or yeah, you know what yeah, I'm asking. So, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're asking. So um, it used to be we would, I would do one interest per ad set when I'm testing cold audiences. Um, I don't do that anymore. I, I actually prefer to do intersecting, right? Because what I found is that if we have um, a, a stacked group of inches, but not not all just in one, but actually intersect them. So I might have um, all of the all of the marketing gurus, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to say, um, but they must also have an interest in all of these different software platforms, and then they must also have an interest in you know all of these tools. So I have at least three layers. What I found is that having a minimum of three layers, even though they're multiple interests, you know, that gives me a really good um, indicator, mm -hmm. excuse me, a, a good indicator of where, you know, what that person's psychographic is right. and, 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 and the, pro the probability that they would fit into, um, into a good audience that would convert. Because I mean, if you know who, and it's just, just keep it in the marketing world. If you know who Ryan Dice is, if you're familiar with, you know, a Weber and get response or Infusionsoft, and, uh, and you also 
like AdWords or or the FB ads manager, that's a probably good that's a probably a good indicator of if you have those three, you know, interests that you're someone that will convert into a mm. lead in the marketing space, right? So it's kind of like, yeah, you got a people stack, you have a tool stack or resources or whatever, and then you have the uh, interests, I guess, like specialty within that thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's perfect. And psychograph, I mean, that goes back to like creating an avatar. Those are all the things that you'd really be digging into. We just hint we did this again recently. <laughs> we like went back to basics with this podcast and like, so it's all top of mind, but it's like, but this is why we kind of did it. Yeah. So we can run better ads to like this show and everything else we're doing. Yeah. Because we were so damn broad before. Uh, yeah, but it relates perfectly to this as well. Yeah. yeah. The, exactly the, what we do. The, the one other area. So when I, I, I do our Facebook ads right now, um, I'm probably going to be getting out of it soon. We're probably going to bring in somebody to run yeah. it for us. But um, when I run the Facebook ads right now, the, um, the the one thing that I don't let Facebook pick for me right now is the placements, because mm-hmm. whenever I, I let Facebook pick the placements and I go and look at my data, they're giving me the cheapest placements typically, but they're also like the crappiest placements that don't convert. So okay. I've always like kind of narrowed it down to like, I just want it to show in the news feeds, Instagram, Facebook news feeds, and that's it. Like, what's your philosophy on placements? So I used to have the same philosophy, mm-hmm. 100%. And here's why I don't anymore. I always choose all placements. And it's counterintuitive based on our past experiences because we know how crappy <laughs> some of the placements were previously. But one of the things that I did not take into consideration, and, and I got this insight from speaking with a rep, go figure, right? Mm-hmm. Not, that's a whole other story. But, <laughs> um, um, but I got this from a rep. She's like, well, you, know, you may want to choose all placements And she said, because what we found is that when you choose all placements, sometimes people may need to see your ad in multiple locations before they convert. And I got thinking about, I'm like, man, you know what? That, that makes sense because so even though I may not be getting conversions from the audience network, Mm -hmm. or I may not be getting conversions uh, from, you know, from, uh, from the, you know, from IG or whatever the case may be, Mm -hmm. this person is seeing my ads across all these platforms and we know someone may need to see your ad a minimum of five or seven times before they actually take an action on it so by choosing all placements i give facebook the opportunity to show my ads in more places which will actually reduce my overall cpm than if i just focus on one core placement Mm -hmm. so you know when i thought about it like that i'm like man that makes perfect sense because now if I'm just saying, if I'm forcing Facebook to only show my ads in a news feed, well, that means that person has to see my ad in a news feed seven times. But I might be paying, you know, twenty dollars CPM in a news feed, where I'm paying, you know, two dollars CPM in an audience network, three dollars CPM in IG stories, you know, um, you know, five dollars CPM in the marketplace. But I'm still getting those impressions. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of like the idea of, well, it's like omnipresence kind of feel. And, and that's why you run you know, Google ads and display networks. So you're kind of showing up on blogs and all that stuff. I mean, we probably don't have time to get into that right now, <laughs> but, but that's the concept is just be everywhere. Even if your conversions are, I guess, happen on like the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like that, that final c- click that makes the conversion may be on the, the you know, Facebook news feed, <laughs> but maybe they saw you seven times prior in other right. places before they finally click that on the news feed. Yeah. So, so when you use the configuration that I walk through in conjunction with all placements, is that much more effective because you're really allowing the algorithm to optimize budget, optimize audiences, optimize creative, and optimize placements. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah, and especially if you're optimizing for conversion, Facebook is going to try to find like the placement that you get the most conversions from as well. So, yeah, it totally yeah, that makes was sense. good, man. Thanks for lining <laughs> that out. That was like the clearest map of of a campaign, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> definitely updated too so i know we're gonna swipe that yeah. <laughs> I want it. um sam talk about uh let's wrap it up like, like talk about your yourself your your agency i know we didn't even like bring it up what was it ppc boutique right yeah ppc boutique i mean that's you know that's the agency uh that you know that we started again you know we we just specialize in working with um high ticket automated webinar funnels like you know so most of our clients like i said they're digital product creators and owners or people who run you know high you know high ticket funnels to applications. Um, and, and I'll probably say where our agency is like 50-50, it's like 50% digital product creators, mm-hmm. uh, 50% application-based uh, funnels. So we're, we're really, really well-versed um, in those areas, man. And, and, it's, and it's, it's awesome because like, I my personal philosophy um, 
with the agency and our agency core value is exceptional client results, period, mm -hmm. at, at any cost. But, you know, I really look at myself as a conduit, right? Because you have people who have, you know, these great products, these great services that have the ability to transform people's lives, right? I mean, because, you know, a, a lot of our clients either help people, um, you know, emotionally from a relationship standpoint, or they show them how to transform their finances, earn more money. And, you know, we're, we're kind of the, the bridge that connects those people that have a solution with those people who have the problem that needs, needs a solution for, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, like, that's like how I approach the agency. And that's why like we are, we are selective of the people that we also work with too, right? Cause we want to make sure that one, they do have like a really good product, really good service um, that adds value, but then also one that we can actually believe in and, and, you know, and like genuinely want to help them to scale because like, if it's something I don't believe in, or it's like, you know, this is not is not really proven. It's probably not going to be a good fit because I want to make sure, like, if we're going to put the time and energy and we're going to be presenting something to people, then this needs to be something that can genuinely help people. Um, you know, get a, get a result. You know, so that's that's our whole approach, man. But you know, we we go all in. Um, and and it goes beyond you know just you know the the ads and the funnels. You know, because we I also provide a lot of insights mm -hmm. because I just from the experience that I have from just being out here doing this, um, just knowing like, you know, how to scale, you know, just different elements of, you know, what you can incorporate into your offer to help increase your customer value. What does your backend look like? You know, so we're, we're not only an agency, but we're also a consulting company as well, because ultimately our goal is not to just run ads and help you make more money, but to make sure that you have the business infrastructure to support it because, mm -hmm. You know, even if we run a bunch of traffic, but you don't have all the 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 business infrastructure and elements in place, then it's going to break down at some point. So yeah, well, the fact that you're you're obviously a consultant, if you were breaking down everything just <laughs> now on here, like the level, I can't imagine what you're talking about with them. Uh, how, how how do they find you and start a chat with you if they want? Uh, Sam Bell Marketing. It's the easiest way, man. man Just go to <laughs> All right, Perfect. we'll link it up and everything else, man. Um. This has been a blast. I, and we have a ton of books. So I won't ask you that again. So, like I'm going to nerd out on some NLP stuff now. Uh, anything else, Matt? Uh, no, I think we covered a lot. I think the, the only question maybe. So the, the one question that I, I, I wish I asked earlier, but now it kind of feels out of place is what 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 tools do you use as far as like your your favorite webinar tool? Um, actually, really, that's that's kind of the main thing that your favorite webinar tool, maybe an autoresponder or something. I'll, I'll give you my quick tech stack. Right. OK, cool. So, um, <laughs> So for hosting, so we do everything on WordPress, mm -hmm. WordPress, Thrive Themes, I want full control. Mm -hmm. um, we have everything on Cloudflare. Uh, and, and the reason for that is to begin ag prevent against uh, downtime, DDoS attacks, um, mm -hmm. and also for caching. So you get faster load time. Mm -hmm. So Cloudflare um, on either WPX hosting or WP Engine, those are WordPress specific hosting providers. Mm -hmm. um, and again, like I said, Thrive Architect for the actual uh, page builder. Um, most of our clients are running um, in terms of CRM, either Infusionsoft, um, Active Campaign, Entreport. Those are like the primary ones. There's a few people on ConvertKit, but primarily Infusion. Like I have a lot of clients on, on Infusionsoft still. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the automated webinar platform, uh, Stealth is my platform of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I recommend people to, um, I, I have a relationship with, have had a relationship with stuff for over, over 10 years. We've run ads for them and, and I know Jeff, he's a good buddy of mine. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's a solid platform and they, in terms of support bar none, like they're yeah. the best. Yeah. Um, second from that would be ever webinar. There's a lot of people that are on ever webinar, um, easy use mm -hmm. doesn't have all the functionality that that stuff does, but. Um, but I would, pro I, I would say that is like the, the stack prep, the, the stack preference, right. In terms of like CRM, um, CRM, uh, webinar tools. Um, so yeah. Oh, awesome. oh, nice. oh, and, and one of the most important ones, I can't even let this out. Um, so one of the biggest challenges with scaling properly is attribution mm -hmm. and, up until recently, up until this year, you know, and we've used a lot of stuff, um, we've used, um, 
gosh, I just went blank. But anyway, we use a lot of the other. Like kind of like a wicked reports kind of yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but we switched everything over to Hyros. We've been using Hyros now. And uh, and it is by, by far the the best attribution tool that we have. We get very, very clear data. Um, and we know exactly how to uh, properly allocate budget. A lot of people who are exclusively depending upon you know, the Facebook pixel or, you know, just, you know, some sort of tracker um, that a pixel based tracker, like you're losing money. Like, mm. I, I mean, and I've seen as bad as, you know, numbers off by, you know, 30 to 50 percent. Right. In some cases, like it's just crazy. So like if you're allocating your advertising bus budget on inaccurate information, like you're just throwing away money. So. Um, so, yeah, man, like Hyros is badass. We're also an agency partner with them. Um, as well. So if you want to want to get hooked up, like definitely reach out. But I think if you're spending at least $10,000 or more, um, you have to have a do proper attribution, whether you're doing a call funnel, whether you're doing a traditional webinar funnel or upsell downsell funnel, like it's it's an absolute must. And that's H Y R O S, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hyros. Okay. Very that's cool. It. So everybody Ooh. listening, go check out Sam Bell Marketing. Dude, thanks so much for, for dude, you dropped so much knowledge on everybody. Right, like, I think this is the deepest we've gone on both webinars and Facebook ads. So it was. My pleasure, man. All My right, pleasure. Man. Really appreciate it, man. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. See it. Awesome. So it was a pretty good interview there. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we took a 10 minute break before hitting record again. We did. Yes. Wait, yes. This is our new banter section. Banter. Yeah. 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 We uh we we polled our audience. Um, if you're listening to this, you may be a, one of the people who took the poll. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, it, dude. We're changing the show so much. Dude, well, we're not gal, changing the show, chick, dude, man. chick. I don't know why I'm saying dude a lot. I was calling oh. Sam Bell dude a lot too. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't I don't know why. Uh, but, but we we polled our audience and we got so much amazing feedback. We're not we're not like drastically changing the show, but we are making some tweaks based on the feedback. And one of the pieces of feedback was. You wanted us to get into the content quicker. Just, you know, a quick intro, introduce who we're talking to, and let's get to the content. Well, Joe and I like to banter. We like to chat about what we just chatted about. So he uses the banter. I think you 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 dub this let's banter. Banter. Let's banter. This let's is our banter, banter portion. Banter. Every podcaster uses the word banter. What are you talking about? I don't know. It's funny. That's a I, I don't know, use maybe it outside an, of this context. I maybe guess it's just ever. an industry term. I don't know. Yeah, but like, let's go banter, man. Let's chit chat. Let's go take a walk outside and banter. Let's 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 <laughs> screw around a little bit on our podcast. Is that better? I mean, that, that I don't call banter screwing around, Matt. This, this is a very serious, serious podcast, okay. and this is our business. People are here. We want to give them what they came for. Yes. Anyway, I this since That's this is our the, banter right this, now. Since though. this is the first episode that we're doing it on, I wanted to give a little bit of context that at the end of the shows, we're going to talk a little bit about what mm -hmm. we just talked about and maybe give some other insights into our business and yeah. fun things like that. Because it's like a mini therapy session. Yeah, because the, the the feedback that we got was the the sort of intros got a little bit long, um, but we also got feedback that a lot of people like this sort of back and forth exchanges that you and I have. So yeah. I didn't use the word banter there. That was good. And the back and forth exchanges. I expect more, uh, you know, the source like items like that. Yeah. Yeah. Pop up. The other uh, feedback words are great. The other um, feedback we got a lot of is that people want more therapy sessions from us, right? Well, I don't think we're going to do like a therapy session a week, mm. but these little outro sections give us a chance to, you know, have maybe like a little mini therapy sessions. We're still going to do at least a once a month therapy session, yeah, but of course, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So these, these will be reserved for, you know, like, I don't know, like 10 minutes ish mm -hmm. or so that will be, and we're, yeah, we're, we're already two and a half in. So we got to pick up the pace, okay. but we're going to, we're going to chat about uh, a lot of just what's happening, but really, obviously, what's happened in this episode, too, and how yeah. it probably relates to stuff we're doing, what we're seeing, what we think about uh, from what we just heard. So with like Sam, tons of webinar talk, mm -hmm. uh, tons of ad talk, mm -hmm. and how do you connect the two and scale. And um, I mean, so many applications here for and, and then to kind of, I guess, encapsulate what you were saying with the with the, the survey mm -hmm. is that. You we're like honing in on audience building topics, mm -hmm. the topics, anything around, you know, traffic generation, growing email lists, uh, ads, things like this, like all that stuff's going to feed your machine, whatever that is. And, uh, and the monetization. So it's mm -hmm. like grow that. And then how are you going to monetize? Well, a lot of folks who polled and listened to us and just our customers and whatnot, they love affiliate marketing. They love all these, uh, multiple pa income streams. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Nothing to say you can't apply this to your sales approach yeah. that is currently working or not working for you. 
um, sales are sales across the board. A lot of, me- but like, yeah, we're going to cater to a lot of these kind of, I guess, uh, lateral forms of, of revenue streams. Yeah. Yeah. Through affiliates and partnerships. All I mean, stuff. really, really we're honing the audience. In, we're not honing the audience. We're honing the, the types of topics we're going to talk about to talk more to people that are focused on building an audience and people that are focused on monetizing the audience. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, you know, you're, you're, we're going to get more tactical. That was some of the other feedback that we mm-hmm. got through these surveys. And you're going to hear us talk about these surveys and probably a few other ad- outros in the future. In our next therapy session, we're probably going to break down the survey in a lot more depth. Um, but that people wanted more tactics. They wanted us to get into the content quicker. Um, and they wanted more therapy session type stuff. So mm-hmm. that's the, those are the kind of the major shifts you're going to see with the podcast. For the most part, you're not going to notice a whole lot of difference. But mm-hmm. um, the, mentally for us, it makes it easier to you know pick which guests to bring on, uh, pick which podcast we go on, mm-hmm. um, you know, tell it, it better explain who our podcast is to our guests that are coming on, things like that. That's uh, that's really the purpose. You as a listener probably won't notice a whole lot of difference. Shouldn't. Other than yeah. the fact that maybe we're a little bit more tactical um, and the intros are shorter. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, it's, it's really more focused. Yeah. I would say more than anything. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, tactics are going to be there around even non-tactical seeming things. Yeah. Like a lot of, you know, we'll have a lot of mindset and, and you know, kind of psychology type folks on the podcast. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of interest in the results about that. But mm-hmm the big thing that we'll strive to do is bring out the tactics, extract these tactics so you can get them in our, uh, you know, in the notes that we're taking on every episode, which we're kind of rebranding and rethinking the notes even mm-hmm. uh, into more like action guides for yeah. each episode. So uh, we're actually going to put less backstory in those notes. They're going to be more geared to, you know, like w- with Sam's case, a ton of webinar strategies walking through you know, his process and then the ads process of actually creating a campaign. Like, holy crap. Yeah. Like that thing is going to be in the actual action. I can't guide. wait to get those notes back so I can hear them back again. How do we get the notes again? I forget. Hustlinflowchart.com slash comp. Yeah. C-O-M-P. That's yeah. right. Um, <laughs> we might change that to action or something later, but for now, you know, let's comp. not confuse comp people. It's at comp right now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it will always be at comp. Yeah. If we yeah. make it at action, then it will be at both. But yeah, it's at comp right That's now. a future thing. Yes. That's in the future. Uh, so we talked a lot about webinars on this episode. Mm-hmm. Webinars is something we used to do a lot of. We've kind of done less of. I actually think that Sam did a great job of making webinars feel much more approachable again. Big time. Um, so, you know, maybe we're, we'll, we'll start doing some more webinars again and experiment with some of the tactics. Um, after we got off the call, Sam said, hey, if you guys need help setting up webinars or stuff, you know, you want to pick my brain, yeah. feel free to shoot me messages. Happy to help. So we'll probably uh, take him up on that, maybe do some more webinars and uh, get his advice to, to to help us get those webinars, get some traction. They t- he took a different approach that uh, not approach that we have taken necessarily, at least not at Evergreen. Yeah. Um, between the two of us. And it just makes a lot of sense. The numbers game. Mm-hmm. And and the beauty is you can kind of uh you know on the ad side, which I think we're gonna translate to now, mm-hmm. it's like you can leverage the you know, he's a big Facebook guy, but he leverages all the platforms really. Mm-hmm. But the fact is these platforms have really great AI and built in brains basically that are way smarter than us humans collectively even yeah you know and um leverage those platforms and he yeah like that was probably the clearest way i've ever heard that described yeah even with the specifics in there too yep and at the end uh he actually broke down his tool stack of the tools that he uses in his business um there's another webinar platform that he didn't mention that we that when we do webinars we we've used in the past and Mm -hmm. we really like it's called easy webinar right and easy webinar is one of the sponsors of this show we love casey over at easy webinar we love the the platform they are they are sort of evolving it and improving it all Always. the time and um it, it's a really really great platform to do both live and automated and hybrid and all like the different everything else in between <laughs> all the webinar types you can do with easy webinar as well um and he actually made a i believe a 25 percent off offer for hustle and flowchart listeners so if you go to possibly yeah it's it's there's a discount i forget i think it is 25 i think it's 25 well, we could always pull it up on the page in front of you. Okay, I, I will pull it up on the page in front of me. So it's at easywebinar.com slash hustle. Let's confirm and, our uh, copy here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> easywebinar.com slash hustle. I'm it's just hard typing to it type in. and uh, talk at the same time. Sometimes. Yes. Uh, refresh the page, I think. Uh, sometimes the HTTPS, you know, that whole fun thing. Pause, y'all. There we go. There we go. Twenty-five percent off. 
Yeah, exclusive offer, 20% off the monthly and 25 off annual. There we so go. There you go. I just wanted to make sure we're good. So if you sign up on a monthly basis, he's giving you 25% off for being a listener. If you sign up on an annual basis, he's giving you 25% off since you're a listener. Dang so, right. Easywebinar.com slash hustle. That's where you can get that. Another great webinar platform that uh, you can implement all of the stuff that Sam was teaching with that platform as well. For sure. So um, yeah, this is a fun episode and this is, I think an example of how you'll get some future ones. I think Sam's a super tactical guy just naturally anyway. Yeah. He even said he was a data guy. So um, it's pretty easy to get him honed in on this. So we'll see how uh, this fares in the future. But I was stoked on this episode. I'm happy. Yeah. And there's a lot of I hope it helps you guys too. Everyone listening in, in however way, even if you don't use the webinar portion of it, just use the ad portion. Like that's just a simple, you know, you don't need a damn ads course. Like just follow what he just, said, yeah, you know, which is crazy. I mean, like that's what I liked about Sam so much too. He just gave away the farm when it came to that, you know, he's oh, so, yeah, so open, so transparent. So just like giving, like not holding anything back. So, yeah. um, awesome stuff. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. uh, it's been real. It's been real and Go, expect uh, more good shit like this. Yeah. Tell your friends too. If you feel like this, this, uh, you know, this refocus podcast, if you made it this far, I hope you'll enjoy it. Yep. Um, Go go tell some others, and if you want to do the whole review and all that fun stuff wherever you're listening, we would always appreciate it's that. Very appreciated, and uh, uh, you know yeah. we will read some reviews on the the show from time to time, so that's always a bonus. We're gonna get a little crafty with this here thing. All right, we're over our ten minute mark now. We got to stop talking, Matt. <laughs> Alrighty, thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> thanks everybody for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart Podcast. <laughs> For taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out, all the good stuff from this episode. We actually have a nice, simple notes version that you can find on our website. So go to evergreenprofits.com, find this episode that you just listened to, and uh, give us your email address, and we'll send you the notes. Thanks for listening. Go get it. Wiki wiki. <laughs>